Hey everybody, this is Justin. This is the Demonic Sweaters Podcast, and this is episode number 60. And today is July 14th, 2024. I realized the last time I forgot to mention the date <laughs> uh, because I hadn't done this in a while. So I forgot that I used to do that. And I guess that's a good idea uh, if your case you're listening to this on a, you know, a rerun or something like that. Um, yeah. So uh, today's episode, I don't have a guest yet, but I do have plenty booked. So starting next week, um, I have the return of Chad sign and I'm really looking forward to that. Chad is probably my oldest and best friend and uh he's been on this podcast several times and i think was the first guest that i ever had on this podcast so it's only natural that he'll be the first guest uh coming back and uh in addition to chad i've got several others booked in the coming weeks and some of those i'm well i'm really excited about all of them but some of them are going to be maybe some people that you've heard of uh (laughs) you know outside of this podcast which is really cool um, so make sure you stay tuned for those. I'm not going to announce them just yet because I don't want anything to fall through and then, you know, have them not be on here. But it's all looking good uh, as far as I can tell. So just stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed and uh, stay tuned. And there's going to be some great guests coming up. But listen to this one, too, even though there's no guests, because I feel like tonight's topic is actually quite important. And uh, this is something that has been really under my skin for the past i don't know year uh it's not like i didn't think about it before that you know or even talk about it on this podcast before but really really it started to get to me uh last year and that is social media uh and how much i i hate it (laughs) basically um so yeah and what i wanted to do here was actually talk about some of these researches uh is that, a, is that a way to say it? Some of these researches, that's a terrible grammar. But some of these studies, that's what I'm looking for, um, that I have found that not only suggest, strongly suggest, that social media is terrible for your mental health, it's also terrible for your physical health. And uh, this is something that I started to feel personally. Um, and I was like, you know, I started to, I was starting to have certain issues and uh, without getting into too much detail, but, you know, physical problems. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know, what is different? What am I doing that's, that's that's you know, that I changed? or You know, and I realized that my, my Instagram usage was, like, way up. And, like, my TikTok, and I can't even believe I even have a TikTok. I still have it. But I don't have much. I mean, I have TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And not Mastodon, but nobody nobody uses that. Like literally nobody. Um, so I have those two. YouTube is like my part time job, so I don't really count that one. But it does cause some stress too. Uh, and I'm going to go over some of that. Uh, what I did about that, or what I was feeling about that first, and what I did about it. Um, that's a different thing. But I'll get into that here in a bit. But anyway, I was feeling, you know, like the Instagram, and I still feel this way. Like it, it really it gets your it's hooks in you you know and it really really just really tapers you to the phone and i can't stand that uh last night i was sitting there i was laying in bed well first i put on a movie and i started watching this movie and it was a terrible movie but i like terrible movies um and i was watching it and then i picked up my phone and started scrolling instagram before i knew it knew it the the movie was like 75 percent of the way over and i hadn't watched anything I'd sat there and looked at my phone the entire time and I was like, what am I doing? And like, so finally I set the thing down and I started the movie over and I got like, I don't know, 20% of the way through it and then fell asleep. But still, at least I was able to put the phone down. Um, And I was thinking, you know, the whole time when I was sitting there scrolling through reels and all that garbage that, you know, I need to stop. I was sitting there thinking that and I just kept doing it. And, you know, this is for somebody like me who has an extremely addictive personality, like extremely. I mean, you know, I had all kinds of problems with that when I was younger. And I've gone through some of that on this podcast, too. But if you didn't know, maybe this is your first episode you're listening to. Um, You know, I was pretty heavily addicted to substances uh, when I was younger, especially through my 20s. 
Um, I stopped in my 30s and uh, became sober and have been sober uh, this entire time uh, since now I'm 48, and with the exception of a couple of little hiccups there, but they weren't anything. I didn't really, I don't think I ever really like fully relapsed like some people do, which is weird. You know, I will admit that there was a period there, and I think it was like 2017 or something like that, that I drank. I drank for, I think it was two months. And then I just didn't like what it was doing, and I just stopped again. It it was weird. It wasn't like a big deal. Um, and I know not many people are like that, where they could do that. Uh, but I luckily, I stopped myself before it became a big deal. I think that's what it was. But uh, anyway, like uh, my th- that's a different story altogether. But what I was really trying to talk about here was, uh, you know, just how people with an addictive personality are really susceptible uh, to these kind of things uh, with social media more than a lot of people. Uh, and I think, well, I don't know if that's true, actually. Uh, you know, and I'm kind of speaking off the cuff here. You know, if I may change my mind mid-sentence. I do that a lot. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's true. It seems like everybody's addicted. Like everybody. Like you look around and literally everybody's staring at their phone. And that just can't be good. It really can't be. It isn't good. We know it's not good. What are we going to do? I mean, we have to stop. I'm really trying to make a conscious effort to use it less. Uh, I may, you know, I've deleted a lot of my social media accounts. Like I said, I don't have Facebook. I haven't had Twitter for years. Um, I came back to Facebook for about, I think it was a year or so, uh, last year. And that was when I really started to notice all this stuff even more. Like, it started to really slap me in the face even more. And the reason why I went back to Facebook was just trying to promote music. And, you know, that was mainly it, trying to promote the band at that time, the Demonic Sweaters band. Uh, so, yeah, I deleted it again. Um, I not re- I have TikTok. I don't really go on there that much. Uh, I upload something every now and then. Again, this is this is mostly the only reason why I keep Instagram, too. And a lot of people say this. You know, a lot of people say it's just for promoting my stuff. You know, I just want to promote my music. I want to promote my art. But the thing is, is like the more and more I do that, the more I realize it's kind of completely pointless because, well, I would say it's 80% pointless because most of the people on there and people who have like viral videos can really attest to this, um, that it doesn't really convert. You know, it converts to them wanting to watch more of whatever type of video you had that went viral. That's what it converts to. It doesn't really convert to, you know, music sales or art sales, rarely. I mean, it it does occasionally, but it's very rare. The vast majority of people on social media are just there to see more social media. They're there to see more reels. They're there to see more short TikTok videos or shorts. So I don't know. I toy with the idea of deleting it, but... I actually found a really good guest for the podcast through there. Uh, so, you know, there things do happen occasionally. But the key is... I, actually, I don't know what the key is. I really don't know. If you have any ideas, come on. Come on the podcast and, and talk to me because I want, I want to hear them. I feel like certain things should not be allowed. Maybe this is, uh, you know, something we could do. Like certain types of videos... Um, that promote very low attention spans. But again, that's like 99.99999. No, that's 100% of the stuff that's there. So I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, let me play a song, and then I'm going to come back and read some of these articles that I found that are going to blow your mind. Like, they are absolutely terrifying And this will definitely make you want to not use social media as much. So I'm going to play a song. And the first song I'm going to play here is by an artist called Lith. And uh, this is um, an old friend of mine uh, by the name of Kate. This is her project. And uh, you can get this at her Bandcamp page, which is... Wait, what is it? Let me pull this up here. No, I just had it. Hold on. I closed the tab. Let me open this back up again. I guess I can edit all this nonsense out, but maybe I'll just leave it in here because I'm silly. 
Uh, where is it? Where's my library? Blah, 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 blah. Here we go. No, I don't want to do that. It's playing. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the actual page. Uh, there it is. Okay, so it is just lith music, L Y T H music dot bandcamp dot com. And check out uh, the page there. Pick up her EP or their EP, rather, um, which is called Lore. And it is really good. Actually, it's a full length. It's not an EP. There's eight songs on this thing. And I'm going to play the song uh, Desolate Passage to a New Land. And I really like this one. It's just kind of this really creepy, cool song. I don't know. You just listen. It's really cool. Here we go.
All right, that was Desolate Passage to a New Land by Lith. And uh, yeah, that whole album is really cool. I really like the production on it. It's There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. You know, like there's some effects on the vocals or like maybe there's samples happening. I don't know. Like I love layered stuff like that where you can't really tell what it is exactly, but it's like you're definitely hearing something. <laughs> I just think that's really cool. It sounds amazing on headphones. So definitely pick that up. It's at uh, Lith Music at Band or sorry Lith Music dot Bandcamp dot com. It's just L Y T H M U S I C dot Bandcamp dot com. I hope I, that's not Lith Music. Is it Lith? Lith or Lith? Lith or Lith? Sorry, Kate. Uh, I should have asked you that. Um, it's one of those. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah. So I know a lot of you out there, before we get started on the social media stuff, you're probably thinking, isn't he going to talk about the attempted assassination of Donald Trump? And uh, that wasn't my plan, but you know, I figured I, I should probably mention it. Uh, yeah, that's really messed up. Uh, this is a horrible situation. You know, I because my last, you know, my last podcast was talking about how much I couldn't stand either candidate. It doesn't mean I want people going out there and shooting them or shooting anybody. Uh, that's just, I don't know. The gun stuff in this country, it's really a big problem. Uh, it just really is. So I don't know. I, I'm not really going to talk too much about it because, you know, that's just all over the news right now. If you want to hear about that, you can go listen to the news. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of wild conspiracy theories going on on both sides um you know the democrats saying that or not the democrats but people uh who are left left leaning uh people are saying you know that it was faked or staged uh by donald trump to get sympathy votes and then right leaning people are saying that it was staged uh to or not staged that it had something to do with the left trying to actually get rid like assassinate donald trump uh but you know it was just uh, uh as far as i know an unfortunately uh misguided young man who was very young 20 years old and then he also took somebody else's life uh who was just you know in the basically a bystander and then he lost his own life it's just a horrible thing it's just horrible I mean, what else can I say? Um, I'm glad that Trump wasn't killed. Uh, I don't, I don't want him to get killed. That's that would be awful, because any time. I, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that would be awful. I mean, we just don't do that in this country. I mean, it happened once with JFK, and it almost happened with Ronald Reagan, uh, but oh, and Abraham Lincoln too, of course. But yeah, it's weird, you know. We live in weird times. But when when have there never been weird times? That's the thing. Like everybody always says, like, oh, it's so crazy now. Look at history. I mean, it's been crazy forever. I mean, that JFK is a great, you know, thing to bring up. I mean, around that time, look at how America was in the 1960s and how much chaos there was. How the chaos has been here. We've been living in chaos since biblical times. I mean, it, it it goes back as far as the written word. So, I don't know. Don't freak out about it because it's always been here. It's not getting worse. It's it's always been like that. Maybe it's getting better. I mean, a little bit in some ways. I think it is. Anyway, let's talk about social media because that's what I wanted to talk about originally. Uh, and I, when I started planning this episode before I even heard about uh, that stuff. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, this part's not getting better. This part's definitely getting worse. Um, let's start off here. I have a few articles uh, that I put that I picked, and one is from Time Magazine. This is the oldest one that I picked here. Uh, it is kind of old, but it's still very relevant. And uh, this is talking about how Instagram is the worst social media network for mental health and well-being, according to a recent survey of almost 1,500 teens and young adults. While the photo-based platform got points for self-expression and self-identity, it was also associated with high levels of anxiety, depression, bullying, and FOMO, the fear of missing out. Out of five social networks included in the survey, YouTube received the highest marks for health and well-being and is the only site that received a net positive score by the respondents. I wonder if that's different now 
That was 2017. I'd like to see this study done now. Uh, Twitter came in second, followed by Facebook and then Snapchat with Instagram bringing up the rear. That's a weird way to write that. Um, but the, the gist of this is, you know, it's talking about mental health. And uh, this was a, a study uh, published by the United Kingdom's Royal Society for Public Health. Uh, included input from nearly 1,500 young people ages 14 to 24 across England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland from February to May of 2017. People answered questions about how different social media platforms impacted 14 different issues related to their mental or physical health. Now, the thing is here, I mean, it goes on. I'm not going to read the whole article, but I'll link it in the description of the podcast. This is one of the things, uh, we all know this. We all feel this when we look at Instagram. One of the things that drives me crazy about people criticizing social media today is they always say young people. It's always just talking about how it's bad for young people. It's bad for people. It doesn't matter if they're young or if they're teens. It's bad for adults. It's bad for old people. It's bad for me. I'm kind of (laughs) old. It's bad for me. It's bad for you. It's bad for everybody. It's not just teens. Yeah, it's bad for teens and adults. But why all of a sudden, like, when they become an adult, should we not care anymore? Like, we're all being affected by this, not just young people. Social media is poisoning our society. Now, this is, you know, the mental well-being. And a good example of this, okay, like, one of the things that happens to me since I'm a drummer and a musician and I'm on Instagram and I see a lot of drum stuff on Instagram and I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling and I see like, you know, I might see somebody playing a groove that's pretty cool. And then I see like some guy that's like, like twirling flaming drumsticks while jumping up in the air, like obviously doing something just for attention. And then you start seeing more of that. And then I start thinking, like, is this what music is becoming? Like, this is this is what people want to see? They want to see, like, circus sideshow acts? Like, what is the point? Like, I don't want that. I don't want to see that. I don't care about that. To me, that kind of stuff, especially when I start seeing a lot of it, it really starts to rub me the wrong way. Um, and then I even see like like drummers that are good. Like I know they're great drummers. Like there's like some really really amazing drummers. But all the like okay, here's another example. Like you'll see this drummer like just playing on a practice pad like ridiculously fast, just like and like that's the post. What is this? I mean, what is the point of that? It's just you know think about when we were in like grade school and there was like the show off you know the kid that was always like it's just videos of show offs like why would you want to see that it's not helping me get better it's not enjoyable to watch or to listen to it's just somebody showing off and not that i'm i I don't even not even jealous like i'm like i don't care that they could do that that's cool i'm glad they can do it it's a skill i appreciate the skill but do it in your room like, who cares? <laughs> you know, like, start recording some music that I want to listen to. You know, do something that's longer than 10 seconds. Uh, something that has, like, some meaning behind it. I don't know. I, to me, that kind of stuff, it really starts to get under my skin. And then, you know, you'll be sitting, or I'll be working on something for months or even years, you know, and post a, 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 a you know, promotional video for my my album or whatever and nobody even sees it because the algorithms decide what people should see and what they shouldn't see and the algorithms decide that people should see playing seven billion miles an hour on a practice pad and that's more important than somebody who spent a year making a record and trying to promote it so that's what algorithms think that people should be watching instead of watching quality content or listening to quality content that has some time and love put into it. So that kind of thing, and I start thinking that stuff, and that really brings me down. That puts me in a bad state of mind. And I just don't like it. And I feel like that there's a lot of people like that that feel this same way. Um, 
so and this is you know i know i went off on a tangent there and this isn't from the article or anything but that's like an example of how it affects my mental health and i know there's a lot of you out there that it probably does you know there's body image stuff and like you know people you see like fitness models and like and then you look down and you see your your belly and you're like what a what the you know <laughs> like it's not good what is the point why are we doing it why are we torturing ourselves with it so next here okay so this is where this gets really serious i'm going to read the next study i have here and this is from a little more recent this is from 2020 study social media use personality impact risk for heart disease this was a study done by where was this uh, Augusta University and heavy users. Here's what the article says. I'm going to read, you know, the beginning of it here. Heavy users of social media have higher blood pressure at night, a risk factor for developing heart disease. Re- research at Augusta University found that was particularly true for millennials and certain per- personality types. Uh, that part's weird. Millennials? Why? Uh, but anyway, Dr. James Halbert, a postdoctoral researcher at Georgia Prevention Institute at AU had been scheduled to present the latest findings this week at a meeting of the American Psychosomatic Society, but that meeting was canceled over concerns about no- novel coronavirus. Oh, this is about it getting canceled. Anyway, um, every major meeting... All right, come on, let's get on to the point here. Um, high nighttime blood pressure is known to be associated with increased risk of developing heart disease, and Harshfield and Harbert were among the researchers looking into new sources of stress that could elevate blood pressure. They started with looking at how people's lives are being transformed by the digital revolution, and not always in a good way, Harshfield said. This, re- this is a revolution we're going through, the cyber revolution, he said. I was thinking, what kind of psychological damages, or no, sorry, what kind of physiological physiologic, rather, damages are coming out of this cyber revolution? They soon focused on social media use and found that heavy users indeed had elevated nighttime blood pressure, particularly those who were addicted to their phones, Halbert said. The cell phone phone dependence also created extra stress, he said. Now, stress is not something to be... I mean, stress is going to raise your blood pressure. I'm speaking now. I'm not reading. Um, All of these things, you know, high blood pressure from a phone from looking at your phone this is an actual study done where they're finding that it's raising blood pressure and that's not surprising you know people can get you know if you're having all these stresses happening to you when you're looking at social media of course it's going to raise your blood pressure and it's going to do other stuff too let's talk about that other stuff here's my next article that i found and this is a little more recent this one's from january 25th 2022 from uh, UB Now, which is uh, University of Buffalo, I believe. And uh, this one's really, really scary because here we go. This is social media use tied to poor physical health. January 5th, 2022, social media has been linked to biological and physiological indicators associated with poor health or poor physical health among college students, according to the results of a new study by a UB researcher. Research participants who use social media exclusively were found to have higher levels of C-reactive protein, uh, CRP, a biological marker of chronic inflammation that predicts serious illness such as diabetes, certain cancers, and cardiovascular disease. In addition to elevated CRP levels, results suggest higher social media use was also related to uh, somatic symptoms like headaches, chest and back pains, and more frequent visits to doctors and health centers for the treatment of illness. Social media has become an integral part of many young adults' daily lives. Again, with the young adult stuff, not even think, not even talking about themselves. They're probably just as, as addicted to the phone as the young adults. But anyway, uh, says David Lee, the paper's first author and assistant professor of communication, College of Arts Sciences, it's critical that we understand how engagement across these platforms contributes to physical health. Now, this article goes on even more, but again, uh, this is actual studies done that is finding actual physical changes to people's health 
from social media. So this is not just me- mental health. And not that mental health should be, you know, swept under the rug or, you know, swept under the rug. No, that's not the right expression. <laughs> not that mental health should be forgotten about. Um, it's equally as important. But the thing is, it's just bad all around. It's bad for your mind. It's bad for your body. It's bad for everything. It's bad for society. Uh, it's just, man, I don't know what we can do about it. All I know is I really feel like I need to play another song now. So I'm going to play one from one of my, uh, or I'm going to play one of my new ones. Uh, this is from my newest album called Synthesizers and Drums. And you can get this at anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. And I'm going to play a song. Which song should I play? Uh, let's see. Where is my stuff? Let's do uh, The Rising Snare. Yeah, this is one. I, you might have heard this one already if you've been following me. I posted on YouTube a while back. But uh, yeah, this is on the new album. It's called The Rising Snare. And uh, this is it. Here we go.
All right, that was The Rising Snare. And like I said, that's off of my new album called Synthesizers and Drums. You can check that out at anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. It's also on all the streaming services. If you don't like to spend money and you're a mooch, uh, you can go there and listen to it. Um, But yeah, so just one more thing I wanted to touch on here. I know this is kind of a short episode, but since I don't have a guest, I'm trying to keep these ones where it's just me on the shorter side. Uh, But one of the things I want to talk about was YouTube. You know, being a YouTuber, I burned out really hard uh, probably about, I don't know, three or four months ago, the beginning of the year. Basically, right after I got back from Christmas uh, break, uh, visiting my mother down in Florida, and I came back to New York, uh, I just I just really burned out. <laughs> and uh, it's not just looking at YouTube, you know, or watching YouTube, it's creating content as well. I got super burned out on, you know, doing stuff that the algorithm likes. And that really starts to not be fun. Uh, And the reason why is because, you know, I started doing YouTube. And I talked about this in the episode where I, you know, I'm not an influencer episode. Um, I started doing YouTube, you know, basically as a, a a place as a creative outlet, you know, like creative expression for my music and videos. And uh, it just so happened that, you know, I also liked, you know, gear and would do some gear reviews and stuff that I liked. And those ended up becoming like more and more popular. And, uh, you know, not that I hate doing them, but when you start, when I started to lose sight of, my primary focus, which is creativity. Uh, you know, and granted, there are some YouTubers that that mix creativity with with reviews and stuff like that. But to me, that's still that's still a review. Even though I watch some stuff like that, like good one that comes to mind is Bad Gear. Uh, I love that channel. He's great. You know, and he mixes in some of his own music and does these gear reviews and stuff like that. Uh, but I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It would get old. It, I mean, I get tired of watching them after like a couple of episodes even though they're great you know and i think he's hilarious and he does an amazing job i can only watch a couple and then i'm like okay that's enough you know it's the same thing over and over again that's the problem with the algorithm it wants the same thing over and over again it wants something predictable and human beings creative human beings don't like predictable things they like to be surprised and i don't know so that starts to really get old when you are a creator on YouTube and you can totally burn out and people ignore like, it's not people though. See, here's the thing. I used to get mad. I used to think, why aren't people, you know, watching the stuff that I, that I spend all the time on, you know, why are they only watching these, you know, these junk videos that I don't really care about, but it's not the people. It's not their fault. It's what they're getting shown. It's the algorithm's fault it's like done on purpose and see the thing is is like they say that they do these algorithms to give people what they want but that's not true it's only true to some extent yes maybe they want it they'll click on it but is that what they really want in the long run and is is it what they're going to continue focusing on what we've seen when we basically allow machines to curate our content is the content becomes dumber and dumber. It just keeps becoming more and more low attention span because, and the reason why is because people are getting bored. They don't, it's not interesting enough to hold their attention for longer than a couple of seconds, but that's what the algorithm keeps pushing. Yes, like those things people will click on, but they won't watch. They won't dig deep. They won't, you know, they'll watch it for a second, but they're not going to like, okay, here's, here's a, here's an example. Like nobody's when, when I was a kid, people would draw band logos that they liked on their trapper keepers, you know, in school or their notebooks. Nobody's going to draw a, real (laughs) on their notebook 
well they might draw a meme uh to be funny but nobody's gonna draw like like somebody who posts a, a reel like they're they're not they don't even have a logo they're not going to remember it even if they did half the time like i have kids i teach kids and like half the time they'll they'll know a song you know they'll like a song from tiktok or what whatever but they have no idea who sings it they won't even know the name of the song they'll just know like a lyric in it because they've only heard two seconds of it uh and they know nothing about the person who made it and they don't care they'll just go on to the next thing so machines machines choosing what we should watch and listen to it sucks it just fucking sucks we need to stop it ask somebody what what is good you know stop scrolling anyway i I went off on another rant but uh another thing that i want to talk about is youtube thumbnails now this is one thing like a long time ago when I really started to get into YouTube, I actually went to the YouTube office. They had like classes there because I'm in New York city and, uh, they, they gave us a whole class on creating thumbnails and, uh, you know, stuff like that because thumbnails are a, another thing out there that the algorithm decides what they're going to show to people. Uh, and if people click on it, then that algorithm will, you know, decide that more people should see it and more people will click on it. And it's just like the snowball effect. But the problem is, is these thumbnails have become more and more stress inducing over time because that's what people click on. When people see something that's like, uh, what's a good example? Um, you know, you won't believe how this cat nearly died uh i don't know Uh, that's not a good one but like stuff i'm getting tired but uh, it's kind of late here and i've worked all day but you know what i'm talking about you you know exactly the type of thumbnail i'm talking about and then the title will not even match like the text on the thumbnail you know and i've been guilty of some of these myself i'm fully aware of that but of course i don't do like those viral clickbaity type things but I've, i've tried to create thumbnails that would make people click uh for sure but I noticed in the morning, because I have a routine. Every morning I wake up. I wake up really early. I wake up at like 5 or 6 a.m. And I make some coffee and I sit down. And the first thing I do is open up YouTube. And I start watching some videos. And I started to notice like a couple of weeks ago that when I was doing this and I was just scrolling through and seeing these algorithmic suggestions uh, and all these thumbnails that I was feeling stress from those thumbnails. Like the the actual light coming off the screen, I could feel it stressing me out. Like the caps, letters, the outlines around the people, you know, the smiling faces and the, the you know, top 10 drummers don't know they're making this mistake. Oh, there's a good one. Okay, so stuff like that, you know, like these some guy pointing at a, or a big arrow pointing, like... All these things were just, they were stressing me out. And I was like, man, why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this to myself? So I found this plugin uh, on Firefox, and it actually runs on on all browsers I've found, or most popular browsers. And uh, this plugin actually disables all the thumbnails on YouTube. And I, I made a video about this. It's just called Hide YouTube Thumbnails is the name of the plugin. And it's really great. Um, it actually has kind of solved that for me i can now look at youtube and it's just a list of text on my home page and i don't see any images until i actually click on one of those lists of text and i've also installed this on my computer at school where i teach and um what's great about that is because i'm you know i I always use youtube for teaching my students i'm a drum teacher if you don't know that and I, i teach drums and YouTube has a lot of great drum lessons on it, like transcribed music and stuff like that. And we use that a lot. And a lot of times there'll be those, you know, the list of videos on the side with all these thumbnails and like those distracting, stress-inducing faces on them. And the kids always, like, they don't even read it. They just see this picture. They're like, I want to see that. Like, they will genuinely say that to me. They're like, oh, I want to see that because it, it has this stupid-looking face or, like, an, an arrow pointing at something and, you know, just... Uh, 
this kind of crap. And so, but anyway, I disabled it there. And now that problem has totally gone away. Like they're so much more focused because they don't have those pictures. It's really interesting to see how the images uh, really change somebody and they really, they really grab somebody's attention, children and adults, not just children, but it, you know, children, it's really because the children have no self-control, <laughs> you know, like basically like they can't stop and he, adults too. Like we have a hard time, but I mean, you can really test the water with that stuff, you know, when you're, when a child is looking at it. Um, but yeah, so check out that plugin. Uh, you can get it for Firefox or Chrome. I'm not sure about Safari, uh, but it's really great. And there's another plugin somebody had mentioned on the, my video about this, and it's the the name of it's escaping me. What it attempts to do is actually disable the thumb. What well, actually changes the thumbnails to just a, a screen capture from the video that tries to be relevant, and then also tries to change the title to being stress less stress inducing. And I tried it, but it didn't seem to work that well for the titles. Uh, the images, you know, it did help a little bit, but I prefer just to be gone, uh, personally. Like, just to have no image. I find that to be the best. But, uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Check out the articles. Uh, I'll link everything in the description of the podcast. And, uh, yeah, let's try to use social media less and uh, call people. Remember that? We used to call people. Like, call them on the phone and hear the voice. Try that. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to be a guest on this podcast, you want to talk about this kind of stuff or whatever, music or UFOs or anything, really. I'll talk about just about anything. Um, you could come on and uh, send me, well, you could send me an email. And to the way to contact me is demonic sweaters music at gmail.com. Or if you would like to have your music played on here, you can email me at that same address. So if you want to be a guest or you want to be, uh, you have your music featured, send me an email. Anyway, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you all in the next episode with my guest, my special guest, Chad Sign. That one's going to be a lot of fun, and it'll be a longer one too because once we get talking, we usually go on for a while. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. See you all soon. Yeah.